So uh, this actually, this panel um, is part of a larger session that happened before the Ask Me Anything session. It actually ranked really high in audience participation, audience feedback, and so we had to bring it back as a keynote at Affiliate Summit East. So real quick, um, before I introduce the panelists and our experts, start thinking about what SEO questions you may want to ask them, because this is going to become an engaging conversation and an open forum for you to be able to ask these experts anything you'd like in search engine optimization. So let me start with Bruce Clay, all the way over here to your right. Um, Bruce, Bruce Clay is a founder and president of Bruce Clay Inc., a global internet marketing optimization firm. As an industry thought leader, he's an accomplished speaker, author, and educator. He hosts a weekly podcast called SEM Synergy, and his book, Search Engine Optimization, All-in-One for Dummies, is now in its third edition. Next up, Dwayne Forster. He is the Vice President of, of Organic Search Operations at Bruce Clay. Now, prior to this role, Dwayne was a Senior Product Manager with Bing's Webmaster Program and the in-house SEM running the SEO program for MSN in the US and all the Americas in his earlier Microsoft career. He's also the author of two books, How to Make Money with Your Blog and Turn Clicks into Customers. He's written for publications ranging from Search Engine Land and Entrepreneur Magazine to the New York Times and Inc. He's even spent time advising the staff who maintained the White House's website. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, whitehouse.gov. Whitehouse.gov. Yeah. Covering that. Is there a difference? I didn't even know they had a Big website. All right, last uh, but not least is Stefan Spencer. Um, he is internationally recognized SEO expert and best-selling author of Google Power Search, co-author of Social E-Commerce, and co-author of The Art of SEO, which is now in its third edition and considered the Bible of SEO. Stefan's clients he's consulted for have included Zappos, Sony Store, Quicksilver, Best Buy Canada, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Chanel. Stefan speaks at many internet marketing events, like this one. Uh, he's contributed to Huffington Post, Search Engine Land, DM News, among others. He also hosts two podcasts, The Optimized Geek and Marketing Speak. So again, um, please, let's have your undivided attention. Put those phones away unless you're tweeting. Hashtag SES, S, uh, sorry, ASE16. And um, Bruce, do you want to start us off? Sure. All right. Good morning. I'm glad you're all here. How many are awake? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, as was mentioned, we've done this uh, a number of times. Uh, we have a couple of interesting things that come out of this. We can start it with a question of our own. We have plenty of questions that we get all the time. Uh, we have given this panel a number of times. The uh, specific rule we have on questions is that when you ask a question, we ask that they be general questions for the audience. If you have a specific question, that's at the end of the session, come up and see us, because we're still going to be here for about an hour after the session answering questions. Uh, it always works that way. Um, I have a, a couple of uh, comments in general, just so you all know it. Uh, we are all white hat people. Uh, we do not cheat the system, and we will never advise you to. Uh, Google uh, has penalties for that. Um, the uh, comments that we make during the session have historically been tweeted a lot, so remember ASC 16. Uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, everybody should have received an evaluation form when you came in. Uh, so you can save time, just circle 10. It saves a lot of time later. That way, when you, you, know, when you leave, you can just pass it out. It, it won't be a problem. Uh, I want to encourage you to do that because it really helps. We, I don't we, know who it helps, but it really helps. We promise was not. that white hat, though? Yeah, it, it was, was white hat. It totally okay. was. It totally white Because we've, we've marked that with an ad. Right. Um, we, we, promise <laughs> not to, uh, we promise not to suck as well. OK, so uh, we have a couple comments about ourselves so that you can understand where we're at. Um, and we're going to sort of introduce ourselves, and I'll start us with a question. Uh, we have two people that are in the audience with wireless mics. One, two. So what will happen is I'll probably go from side to side. Uh, when you have a question, you know, raise your hand. I point to you, you stand up. That way the guy with the mic knows who you are. And then we'll come over, take the question, and we'll just go through as many as we can. Uh, obviously there's a lot more people 
here than we have time for if everybody had a question. Um, Bruce Clay, Inc., we started in January of 1996. Uh, for those of you that remember, that was uh, three years before Google. Uh, that's back when Al Gore invented the Internet. So it was quite a while is, back. Is anyone here born after that date? Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, We're they, good. They'd We're be good. like 18. Yeah, it changed, but what happens is we have to answer questions then with emojis, emojis only. And so that makes it a whole lot harder for us. Yes. The, uh, so we've been in the ink 5,009 times. So uh, we have uh, done well. We're on five continents. So we cover international as well as domestic. I'll, um, I'm not going to walk you guys through my background. Um, I have a background, however, in gambling. That's kind of where I got my online start. Prior to that, it was at Caesars Palace, legit gambling. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways from this, and this is why this is popular with us, a number of years ago when I was at Bing inside Microsoft, I ran a roadshow tour with Inc. Magazine as our partner, and we went from city to city around the U.S., and we invited small businesses to come in and ask us their pressing questions. Um, myself and Bruce were part of that panel, as well as a couple of other folks. Um, it was a hugely successful event, and it gave us an amazing amount of uh, exposure to small businesses, their concerns, um, the problems that they faced, and we managed to help a lot of folks overcome those, get past that initial hurdle and move forward. Uh, I think the really cool thing about it was that, you know, we, we talk about this as SEO, and, you know, Sean, God bless him, he's an awesome guy, you know, he calls this SEO. Uh, what you will probably notice throughout this is we can field pretty much any question. Um, we, we've, we've got it covered in terms of topics. Um, so if you have something that's beyond SEO, feel free to give it a try. And a lot of times you'll have us just saying, you know, you need to consult a lawyer for that because there are times when you actually need legal advice on things and we'll point you in the right direction. Um, other times though, uh, we may just huddle behind the table here. Um, we're just agreeing on an answer. We're not cowering in fear. Speak well, for yeah. yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I've uh, been in this space for even longer than Bruce. I started Net oh. Concepts in 1995. <laughs> Built my first website in 94. I started in 1972. <laughs> so okay, I, well, as a person. So right. I predate Al Gore. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my big claim to fame, though, is uh, this book. I have a couple others, but... This is a pretty good book. It's a thousand pages. And I brought a few with me to hand out. So who wants a book? Like, who really wants a book? Like, yeah! like, like enough to come get a book. Like, seriously, who wants to come get a book? Seriously, you're going to walk? <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, that's it. I mean, somebody's got to get it, so... Early bird gets the worm. TLDR. Too long, didn't read. <laughs> oh, that was a joke. Okay. Anywho, I've got some more to give out. So if you have a really great tweet, you might get a book. If you have a really great question, you might get a book. Give me 50 bucks, you might get a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically start with one of our questions. Um, now, I'll... I'll start with a comment. If you think you are able to learn SEO in a couple of hours, uh, you're probably wrong. There's two levels of SEO, uh, basically uh, things that you do and things that you actually plan for and work at. And, and just like affiliate, you have to work at it. You have to learn it. You have to practice it. You have to evolve it. You got to get better over time. So. Uh, all of those things we are able to help you with. Um, as I said, if you have a specific question, we'll help you with it. Just come up at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, the question I'm going to start with is, uh, what do you think is happening in search over the next six months to a year, and how does it affect this audience? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, you know, when I was at Microsoft, I spent a lot of time in the engineering groups of, uh, of Bing and got to know the teams, got to know the projects, and it was always exciting stuff. Um, I, 
I will preface this by saying that I still am under NDA from the company, so obviously there are some things I won't share with you. But I will say this. Uh, the areas of voice search and gesture search are um, currently one of the leading areas that uh, everyone is investing in for various uh, and very real reasons. Is anyone here using WhatsApp? Anything like it? Raise your hands, keep them up for me. Okay, so maybe a quarter of the crowd. Um, you know, it's, it's really fascinating. Um, a lot of folks have a, a kind of love-hate relationship with WhatsApp. They don't fully understand it or don't see a value for it and whatnot. But the fact of the matter is uh, these messaging services are probably going to be one of the richest grounds moving forward. It's something that everyone wants to do is just communicate. Um, raise your hand if you have this in your life. Uh, largely virtual relationships with people. <laughs> Email, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. So the rest of you are just lazy or your arm is hung over from last night. That's fine. Um, everybody has this in their lives. And these services, this is why you see Google and Microsoft and Facebook investing in artificial intelligence in these services. Might, sound, might not seem intuitive at first, but those services are areas where we need to understand the emotional content and the emotional context to better surface information that's relevant to the conversation. And so anything to do with voice. And by extension, because voice is tied to a mobile device, now we get into gesture these types of activities are going to have a big influence on search. You know, at first, over the next six to 12 months, you'll see them. The voice stuff is already here. Can you define uh, gestures, though? I can. So uh, in, a, in the most nascent of cases, you will be using your hands to simply execute on your device as you can now. The camera is there. Uh, you may think it's not watching, but it is actually watching. You may think your microphone is turned off, but it's actually listening. Does anyone have an Amazon Echo? Right, it's a pretty cool piece of technology. Um, Here's what's really cool about it. It's always on, unless you physically unplug it. It's always on and listening. So there are plenty of instances where people have used Echo, had it turned on, just sitting on the kitchen counter, had a conversation with their spouse, later that night been surfing online, and ads related to what they were talking about in their conversation now start showing up in their internet session. And people think of that as, oh, that's coincidental. There's nothing coincidental about it at all. <laughs> That information is being gathered, shared anonymously, and then fed into systems that will then track you. And the idea being, if you were interested in it three hours ago, you may still be interested in it right now. So gesture now becomes another layer to this. Um, I had, uh, for a while, I had a Kinect on my Xbox. And that thing was awesome because I could walk into the room and make a series of hand gestures to get it to turn on, power up search, and then I could tell it to order a pizza and it would dial out over VoIP, connect me with my local pizzeria. I could speak to the person out loud while I was letting my dogs outside. And by the time the dogs came back inside, the pizza was on its way to my house. So all of our technologies, all of this exists right now. And as mobile is already entrenched and continues to become a bigger slice of the pie, one of the biggest telling factors is now more than ever, people are keeping their devices for a longer period of time. The average swap time for a smartphone in the United States right now is a little over two years, uh, provided, of course, you don't crush it. It's a little over two years for people to, to swap their phones, which means they're getting deeper into the technology 